Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be showing you some Doom gameplay and performance. I'm gonna reduce my OSD here so you can see the in-game settings. So playing at resolution of 3840 by 2160. Anti-aliasing method of choice is TSSAA. And that's at eight times, which is the maximum. Um, okay, so field of view is at 120. Don't go any higher because it can create a bit of a fisheye lens. If you push it too hard at 16 by nine. Using Vulkan for the API of choice, you can go to OpenGL 4.5 though, which is an inferior API, so Vulkan's the best. Um, everything else is at Nightmare or Ultra settings, which is the highest. Um, some only go to high, just so if you're wondering. But the game is completely maxed out. So, let's get into it. I am very much looking forward to Doom Eternal. I think this Doom came out in about 2016, which was like the reboot. I uh, really enjoyed this game, um, done really well in sales as well I think and um, just playing it again just to kind of see how the RTX 2080 Ti does at 4K and uh, maximum settings as you can see I'm getting 200 FPS and that is the, the frame rate cap so you're not going to get any higher than that um, for anyone that's wondering. So you can use the environment to destroy enemies as well. Um, Doom's a lot more fun when you have all the weapons and you've got loads of different weapons to switch through and choose from. But in the early um, stages of the game, of course, you only have the default weapons. So, uh, not as exciting to watch, but uh, it still plays very, very well. For me, this was the first Vulcan game that really, really did well and showed what the API can do. Certainly performs a lot better than DirectX when it comes to uh, getting the most out of your GPU. Now, if you do see my GPU not at 100%, it's because I'm, hit, I'm at the maximum frames per second. So once you reach the maximum frame rate, the GPU will reduce its load in an effort to save power. So if you're wondering why I'm not always at 100% load, that's why he doesn't need to be once you reach that target frame rate. Okay, let's grab some ammo now, I'm running low. Ammo is always a struggle in this game in the early stages. Um, so, to make sure I don't waste too much of it. Damn, these guys are pretty resilient. All right, I think that's about all of them. Let's keep moving on. The gameplay is very, very smooth, as you can see. One thing I've noticed about Doom, it really does push the Turing architecture. So I'm using a 380 watt BIOS, um, which is the Galaxy BIOS, and I'm pretty much using all of that, even exceeding that at times. So um, you're going to need a pretty beefy power supply if you want to run an overclock like mine and keep it stable. And you're going to need some incredible cooling too. Um, this is one of those games on my... I remember when I used to have my stock cooler on. I used to struggle to hold 2 gigahertz. Um, obviously with my superior cooling now, it's not really an issue. So I'm loving that. But yeah, Doom Eternal looks amazing from what I've seen. It's a shame the game got delayed a bit. I think it should have been out already or next month, but I'm um, certainly looking forward to it. And I'll be definitely getting that on the release day. Let's take these guys out. It's good to do some melee finishes because it allows you to get drops for ammo and uh, bullets, and you really do need them as well. Okay, got some grenades as well. This looks real suspect. I don't know if it leads to something. I don't know. The, the, the environment's destructible to a degree. As you can see, I'm already running low on bullets. So this gun has a, like a concentrated 
single shot which pretty much just tears off body limbs you can see that the bloods are spraying out the top of their necks after their head just gets vaporized but it doesn't have it's a one-shot kill if you land it but it's uh by the slow power -up process but still for a pistol that's pretty impressive gotta watch your back around here because enemies are spawning yeah just one shot in these guys just looking for ammo now as well and armor anything i can find you gotta really scavenge um in the early um, stages of the game when you have enough guns to switch through you've always got um pretty much always got ammo Good thing this character's got good agility and barely these guys are struggling to hit me. Alright, there's some ammo over here as well. Alright, so I've got 19 shots with my shotgun now. That should do. But you do get like a double jump later on in the game, which helps a lot to kind of get around the, the stage. But for now, you really gotta um, plot your roots and use things to gain height and leverage. Something over here. I wonder what it is. Not sure what that was about. Oh, I remember. That's the little device that allows you to get the basically the side automated um, shotgun attachment, so you can charge the shotgun up and you can do three shots in one go. Expends your ammo very quickly, but it does take out stronger enemies like these in one go. That is useful. Ammo is running low, so yeah, just a bit of bit of a struggle at the start. You really gotta scavenge. So sorry if that bores you guys, but it has to be done. CPU performance is amazing as well with the Vulcan API. You can see the i9 9900K, all eight cores and 16 threads being fully um, utilized. Even if it's not by a great amount, it's using them all fairly equally. So uh, it just shows you great um, scaling when it comes to CPU cores. I think this Doom is still a pretty good looking game. I mean, it's not doing anything amazingly well, but it's uh, definitely a good looking game. But the type of game it is as well, I've got no complaints at all. And Doom Eternal is a step up above this. Um, so, um, I wonder how much of a performance hit, um, or how much more demanding it will be to run than this Doom. I can't see it being more than 20 to 30% more demanding, but we'll have to see when that time comes. Don't know what new technology they're using. I know it's on an updated id engine. I know there's some more around here somewhere. Much. There you go. Alright, the stop all of them taken out. Still managing to hold 39 to 40 degrees, which is absolutely amazing. I'm so loving my uh, NZXT Kraken X72 uh, AIO cooler. Just doing an amazing job keeping my RTX 2080 Ti at a very, very um, low temperature especially when under a lot of stress and as you can see 370 watts push through your gpu with an overclock that's going to get things pretty toasty and you'll know this if you try to run this game with an air cooler with these settings so uh, good luck remaining over two gigahertz even but with my setup and my cooling I never see below 2 gigahertz. I, I, remember, I can't really remember the last time I've seen below 2 gigahertz. So I need to make a tactical retreat here, getting my ass kicked. Get some more health. I'm gonna lure these guys up in here so I can throw a grenade. Take them out. So using the environment to my advantage. 
that's on a health bank now. Man, it's so hard to uh, take out all these enemies with this gun at the moment. It's not the best weapon. The, some of the weapons you get later, like the plasma rifle, the grenade launcher, and uh, the rail gun, the minigun, and also the double barrel shotgun. That's when the game starts to get really exciting because you can pretty much blow away enemies in one shot and keep on moving. So I think that is about it. There might be one or two more left. I'll have to find them and take them out. Oh, they're over there. I love the way the blood just sprays up on the wall everywhere. Crazy. I think that is about it. Let's move on. Yeah, Welcome that includes our business on this level. Anyway, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. And as always, thanks for watching.